Hello everybody, welcome to the artclasses.com. Today is going to be a critique and paint over session for term 26 Patreon uh, reward. All right, so I'm gonna spend about half an hour uh, paying over these things. It's not going to be perfect, but I'm going to fix what I'm able to and uh, it should be some hopefully improvement on the creature so nice uh rendering uh, on the design it has well it's a good idea but it has a little bit problems um the whole um especially the horns and the shoulder pad there uh, present big problems um first like the first thing i see is a horn and the thing that is not quite right with the horn is first thing is the lighting so you have to think of how each plane of this facing what direction like in here is pretty clear that that's facing up and it's facing down so you have the lighting right there and then as it goes up the light change a little bit so you have it um, pretty much uh, right where it should be in this part but when it comes to this side of it of the horn um, it got a little weak because I think the reason because your lighting is you make the lighting to contrast and once you make uh, the lighting to contrast instead of uniform lighting or the default light um, it become more like a directional lighting so if you tone down the contrast a little bit it should uh, help the horn not become too obvious if your lighting is off right so that's one thing also um the pointy end here i'm not sure why if it's uh, pointing all the way backward and like the shape of the horn i'm not sure which direction does it go because uh the caught the value of this part over here and the value of this part over here is even though if you look at the top view is probably going to be kind of like this right so as it go backward it should be a little less contrast and this should be more that's mean uh, the light here you could tone that down a bit and there'll be more light in the front so you can have it uh, more contrast the shadow um, shadow you have in the front is pretty much right because the shadow the closer shadow would be darker so what I did was I take away the shoulder pad because the shoulder pad and the horn is got into a little bit of like a conflict because it's instead of having the horn become dominant element and become more visible the shoulder kind of uh, take away that uh, nice design the horn a bit so I just totally take it away and I have like a little stump of the heart part heart shell or kind of little spike instead of that um, big shot big shoulder pad that you have and also if you look at this here the amount of contrast that I have in the front um, amount of contrast that I have overall is a lot less than uh, what you have which is make it easier for me to adding a stronger contrast in the front and a little less contrast in the back and you see the shadow is still underneath it I can add like a, a the bounce light that you have there and the bounce light help separating the horn from this uh, from his shoulder and, and uh, uh, the body a little bit more so it looks like it's kind of coming out in space and if uh, I decided I want the direction of lighting that giving it a little more contrast from the front I could also add more contrast which give it so sort of like a more a lighter version which is you know you get the, the stronger light then this is what you have um, also I changed the color of the fur and I only got 30 minutes so it's this as far as it cool oh one more thing um, is that I give I give the upper body a little more like on the, the pecs and the neck a little more thickness so that it would kind of help convey that it could carry this huge uh, horns and 
uh, the heavy stuff on the top. So it give it a bigger pegs and then uh, including like a slightly bigger arm than what you have there on the beginning of it. And because, well, if you have a, a, a neck or the head that has like a huge horn, if you look at a bunch of like, you know, um, animals that has huge horn, you look at their neck, their necks are big and their trap muscle are big. Um, and since your image didn't, or like you look at it from the front view, right? You could uh, have, you could make it have a bigger back instead of have like a small chest, right? Smaller chest in your area. But since you didn't do that, I have to kind of show it by giving it a little more pecs area and um, more bigger neck area instead. Or I could make it, you know, crouching and make the neck really big so it would show that it could support that uh, huge horn that he has there but since uh, that's going to take a lot more work if I change the pose into like this type of pose because that's going to be a lot of pain over um, so it is well the head should be a little lower so you can see more back then uh, I just decided to just paint over and give it a bigger chest area instead all right guys well um, that just uh, summary so what I Get pin over then now we are going to get started all right so I'm just gonna make a copy of that layer and put it in the folder and I'm gonna make another layer on top of it so I'm gonna be painting some of the stuff over here but first I have to make sure that the horn direction or the shape of the overall image is balance so to speak so i have to uh, redraw the horn so i know which direction it goes but first i'm gonna have to measure this sort of the whole sh the whole shape of the head just using ge simple geometry form so i'm just gonna make a, the head a little smaller so that the body would look big and then I'm trying to make sure that the horn could uh, rotate side to side when he turns so it doesn't get into his shoulder so I might lift the horn to make it a little higher on the bottom part and then I'm trying to see if I could somehow make the shoulder a little bit larger or wider and then the, the upper arms a little bit bigger as for the bottom part, I'm just gonna kind of leave it as is because I have no idea how to what to do at the moment until I get some of uh, this stuff figured out. And I'm just gonna totally take away this um, shoulder pad because it's gonna be distracting uh, when you have the horn and shoulder pad together because the shoulder pad that you have there is a little bit too big. So you can have one dominant element and then the other one you probably want to tone it down slightly uh, and then when he turns around um, it for sure is going to rub each other and it, it it's going to get in the way and now i'm just just going to cut this part or copy the chest here and paste it and i'm going to move it all the way down so that i can expand the, the pectoral make it slightly bigger and then his uh, deltoid will also be bigger since you move the pecs I'm going to move the pecs down and then copy um, use a modifier tool to slightly make it larger so his armpit is going to be on the lower position and then I have to make sure that um, his his back is going to be a bit bigger also since uh, the shoulders I mean the chest or the pectoral is bigger than uh, the back's going to be larger too all right and again if you're watching this video you don't forget to join me live every uh, now I am in Bangkok for the hell of it and um, the times can be different so my live stream is going to be at 7 p.m. on Sunday so uh, changes the time from Friday to Sunday because I think it's the at night it'd be more convenient so now I'm gonna tone down the contrast of the skin slightly a little bit I'm just gonna testing out some of the value here and 
gonna fix up some of the bicep and some of the muscular system on the arm a bit I'm not sure about the color of the, the fur um, it might be a little bit too much on the contrast side um, it could be white or gray but um, in comparison to the overall image when you have the base color that light or that much contrast to the body it you might run into trouble when you are trying to give it a really really solid lighting because uh, the two object uh, the two value that you set for the object is a bit too far apart uh, even though if the object that you have have like you know you have like a really really brown dark brown color for the skin and um, your fur will be really white uh, it's also depends on the lighting that you get your fur won't be too white because uh, if the skin can get the light if the, the skin didn't get much light then the fur shouldn't get to be that light so um, I would lower the overall contrast a bit but I ultimately would like to change the color of the fur uh, because it the lighter color create a kind of a, a weird ch changes the silhouette of the, the creature a bit too much um, so I'm just gonna make the color of the fur um, have I'm just gonna change the color of the fur so that the base value of the fur are a little bit closer to the body not that you can't have um, the contrast but the contrast that you have I think is a bit too much um, so like I said the amount of the light will affect the best color that you have so the white will, will, could be mid gray right and if you change to mid gray then uh, the color will be pretty much the same as the head and the horn which uh, that will also take away uh, the kind of like the, the focal point of this creature because you want the, the person to or the audience to uh, focus on the head design a little bit more so I would change the color of the fur unless uh, if you want that color to be you want the color of the fur to be a little more dominant you're gonna have to change the pose so that you expose the back a little bit more and that would I think that would be your best option because it looks like you want to show off the fur design for this creature right so now I'm changing the pegs and I tone down the highlight on your pegs a little bit like a lot um, so now just like mid-tone and the dark and within the limit range of value it could go a long way you don't really have to always add highlight onto or make it too contrast on every part of the body so you could use um, a limit range of value to just paint the overall and then in the end you could pop the, the highlight uh, on the particular spot so that way you have more control to the overall image and when you are using the default lighting you I tend usually when I do it uh, a lot of time if I do too much contrast on the default lighting or the uniform lighting it's the result end up to be a little harder to um, control your value in the end or when you're trying to get uh, the eyes to look a certain way on the character when you're trying to uh, create the focal point then you become harder if you have uh, if if a lot of if every part of your character has uh, more contrast but you have lower contrast you have more control in the end of how you want um, the, the focal point to be and you can give uh, more light onto that particular part all right so now the delta is going to be bigger and his trap or the trap muscle is basically the muscle right behind your neck or the muscle that uh, if you go for your collarbone and then you have that hole right right next to on the side of your neck and that muscle on your back that's what I'm painting right now those are trap muscle and usually if you got a big head or like have horn the area around the trap muscle you look at goats or uh, well not ox but any uh, ibex and any type of animal that has like huge horn they usually have like a huge neck and huge traps all right so now we got the shoulder 
And then, and clean this, clean up this area a little bit. And you notice I'm trying not to go into the shoulder and pain uh, too much light into it. I try to kind of keep it um, at the low contrast at the moment because in the end I'm going to be painting the, the fur over it anyway. So I might, I probably don't need to finish it. All right. And I'm going to tweak the pecs a little bit more. Yeah, and split the bottom part of the midsection a little bit. I'm not sure if I want to keep the contrast on the belly button, so I mean on the belly, so now I just get rid of it. Um, adding a bit more light, but it's not as light as what you had before, it's just uh, kind of enough to give it the round, rounder surface. And now I'm tweaking the area around the, um, above the armpit, right in between the deltoid and the pec muscle. And as it go on the other side, it's going to be uh, the value on the right side is going to be a lot more subtle. All right, so um, adding a little bit of highlight. I don't think I should. Maybe that's too light. I just want to add a little bit so that it's kind of similar to what you have because I don't want to change too much. All right, and a little bit of the light on to the deltoid. And sometimes texture brush, a lot of people ask me about texture brush, which is, uh, that's very common. Um, texture brush can help if you know what value to put where. Um, it, if you know what value to put where, default brush would work. And if you notice uh, that I paint throughout this thing here, more than 50% of the time I will use default brush and if you see the slant flat brush those are just basic default brush but I just squeeze the circle until it's flat and the reason I like it flat because um, basically I just kind of copied from my art director but it's very useful because you can go into a small corner using the tip of the brush and you know exactly how wide it's going to be sometimes if you use a circular brush um, you have to kind of decrease the size until it's really small to get into that uh, tiny pointy little part but if you have a flatter or like have a taper end on the brush then you can just use that uh, the part that is pinched and try to get that small corner that you're trying to get into all right so now i'm making a new layer and call skull and i'm just going to make the head and the size of the head uh, i make is going to be smaller and so that it would like when you have a smaller head or a smaller um, object right next to uh, the object that you want to um, convert show that is big well if you want a, a big if you want to convey that the body is huge or massive then you want to resize the head a little bit so that it looks small in comparison to the pecs and the deltoid or whatever muscle that are right next to it but if you have it big um, then and I keep pressing the wrong hotkey that's why it's moving left and right um, because the uh, I hard, I try to use the hotkey on the Wacom tablet itself now because usually I don't usually I use a lot of keyboard but now I'm using laptop so uh, I'm gonna have to use this thing on um, that it has on the Wacom tablet itself which um, it can be very useful but Sometimes I still have to go um, to the keyboard to get the hotcut because the, the shortcut key because I'm used to that and that's a faster way to get um, any tool that you uh, want to kind of you know um, it's, it's a faster way to get the tool instead of going onto the interface that sounds like I'm mumbling now because I'm a little further from the microphone and I'm trying to think of stuff to say because I haven't recorded any video in a while all right um, so now. I'm going to the layer behind the skull and trying to give it some shadow and some of the neck structure like all the tendons that come and connect to your um, collarbone and all the muscle from the neck that go connect to your traps on the back but it's going to be very subtle so it's not going to be super duper contrast 
or it's not going to be that visible but you can tell that it has uh, slightly all those uh, tendon uh, to give it a little more natural look I guess I'm gonna have to fix the collarbone a little bit also all right so now everything is connected to the base of the skull and the, the transition probably it's going to be like it's going inside of the skull uh, or you could have it two ways if you want to spend more time painting you could have all those uh, flesh kind of attached to the skull and have those kind of zombie like and attach it to your uh, bone and skull and all that but I'm not sure if you want that so I just kind of making everything going underneath the skull instead but you can do it the other way depends on you know how if you want it to look gross and gruesome but I guess this one you just want it to look like creature and tough with the skull head all right now going to make the horn let's just all right let's start it over from on the horn so um, I'm just gonna explain to you first of what uh, I am doing so since the horn is not straight up it's going to be in perspective so you need to find the mid section of the head so you know where the middle part of the head is and then um, to kind of get the feel of where the horn would be you on the left and the right because it's horns are complicated really um, because on the left and the right it's if you turn the head to the different direction you will have a different perspective if it's straight up then it could be easy because both of them would be symmetry but since it's not then you're going to have to deal with this so i'm drawing a big box over the head or surrounding or covering the head so i know which uh, side or which direction i would see the horn going right and then you're going to have to kind of like make the contour line uh, according to the part so one of these you're gonna see uh, the tube popping up and you're gonna see one side of it and the other side of the horn you're gonna see the tube going away in the negative C space so the contour line would be different as you see that contour that I just made there so I'm just gonna use a contour line to kind of help so that's basically you know if it's really hard to make a super accurate horn in my opinion um, and especially if the horn is curving around a lot then you're gonna have to uh, really be careful of what direction does it curl and what direction of the contour line should be so as I draw I'm gonna draw the contour line along the way so I can have like a, a fairly accurate assessment of how this object would turn in space and then on the other one I'm just going to draw the contour line and see where it contour because it's going to contour differently and now I'm going to measure where it's end up because it's probably going to end up around the same height since uh, he didn't tilt he just rotate uh, if he tilt then um, the tip of the horn is going to end up on the different on the different y-axis um, but the problem that you have is the direction and the perspective when you're doing the horn especially if the horn is big and you have to kind of make sure that uh, it's it has a, a fairly accurate direction of where it goes and the contour line and geometry form uh, would come in to help in this page so and as that one going further away it's going to be a slightly shorter since it's turning away so now I think I have a fairly almost you know fairly accurate it's not gonna be a hundred percent but uh, it's gonna be 80 percent which is kind of good enough and I'm not gonna have much time to paint over so we're just going to make a new layer and paint that and then I'm gonna use this green line it's gonna be my tour guide so that I make sure I get to places that I need to go all right now the tip of the horn here and the other part
okay and if I turn that green line off it should be fairly accurate of the yeah, I still need some tweaking because the one further away should be slightly thinner but I mean it's gonna be shorter because it's going in space and you see uh, you see it's kind of going in that parallel line of both all right so I'm adding the tip of the horn so now I'm gonna compare slightly different um, I'm trying to make the lower part of that curve a little higher but I don't think I would be able to make it but theoretically you want to have the lower part of the curve of the horns a little higher so that um, when he makes some turns it would it would not it would be able to pass the shoulder but then if you think about it um, sometimes you can get away with it because like maybe when he turns he's just gonna turn with the upper body instead of the whole thing so now I'm just gonna give it some texture I usually like to like on to give texture and value at the same time so I'm just gonna make it lighter and now I'm gonna add some shadow and it's, it's barely visible because the value are kind of too close together so um, once I have the, like right now I'm trying to get the form I'm using texture brush and that texture brush sometimes could really help making the transition from uh, light to dark a lot easier than hard edge uh, and uh, it's it can act like a softer edge brush like you know soft brush that you usually use but with uh, with the greer or with the, a more um, textury look I don't know how to say some I would say it's a little more natural uh, it depends on what kind of material you're painting like in this case you are painting bone and horn and the texture that I chose is has that sort of feel that give this a little more rough uh, hard look it's kind of like a hard surface object right so now I am going to to make this look even um, more three-dimensional I'm just gonna add a little more bounce light and the bounce light is gonna be from the left side of the screen the bottom and I might add some um, extra bounce light that might not need to be there just so that it pop or it stand out from the body because you need to kind of separate it out because if the value are too close together uh, you want the horn to be in the front of the body and sometimes necessary to add those uh, extra value in there to help um, when people look at it visually and I apologize if you hear a bunch of you know car noise and motorcycle and stuff because I'm really close to the street and I don't know if at this time I didn't think it would be a lot of traffic here but I think people tend to go places in the afternoon um, and now I'm just gonna add contour line to help selling the direction of the horn and the contour line or the section of the horn uh, you don't have to draw every single section or you don't have to draw the full line it's just gonna be um, I just paint on the part that I thought there would be some occlusion shadow basically and on the other side see the contour is going the other way and as you can see the lines are kind of discontinuous once on the part that it get closer to the plane of the light all right so my horn is slightly different than the original basically and the contrast is not that high but I'm just gonna add contrast a little later now I'm just gonna add a little bit of light and I think the light might be too much on the top so I'm just gonna skip this part here to get rid of those because I'm gonna be getting rid of those light so and I'm just gonna focus more light onto the tip of the horn and some part
all right it has a lot of texture so I've got a little bit let's get a little bit rough to kind of paint around it so might be a good idea if I use overlay so I can try to add some light on top of it so I'm just gonna make a new layer I mean new folder and put all this horn into the horns um, section all right so now my horn still have no directional lighting it's just still basically a uniform line it has form but it has tiny I mean a little bit of lighting so now I'm just gonna try to get the head first and see if uh, it will fit with the horn basically I'm just gonna use a pretty similar value and but there's some part I can't paint over which is that part there that the texture brush didn't get through so that's just gonna get rid of that that's part of the horn that's kind of paint over so it's on the top layer that's why I couldn't paint over it um, now I am going to use a lighter value just gonna pick it from there and use that value to create the form on the skull just gonna create a big form first before I start going in and add you know um, the socket eye socket and nostril so once I get this form and I'm just gonna go in and start adding a bit more detail and some light and some shadow there basically I'm just gonna you know make it look like a a buffalo skull and adding the deep shadow on the eye socket and nostril and then we're almost there then I'll probably have to add his jawline a little bit uh, and I think this might go over a little bit over half an hour but oh well wish I have more time all right I'm just gonna use those line shadow and create the form onto the bone and since it's hard surface uh, since it's a hard material so it's uh, that I'm gonna make the highlight pop a little bit more using um, dodge tool forgot what the tool was called uh, for a moment then I'm gonna just gonna add a little bit of teeth somewhat I was gonna make it like sharp teeth and stuff but then I was like well that probably doesn't look good so I'm just gonna add some random grotesque teeth around it <laughs> and it looks pretty weird just gonna erase some uh, and then I should add the, the bottom jaw that's what you have there and I'm giving it uh, some sort of spike around the base of the horn and the lower part of the jaw right there I'm just gonna make it not as big as yours but it's gonna be right behind the skull because if I make it big then it's just gonna go back to that make his head look big again so I'm just gonna keep it to the minimum of um, what I could all right so now we basically have the skull and the occlusion shadow inside and the cast shadow inside should be fairly pretty dark because the light can get through there let's see I'm gonna add some cast shadow on the bottom make it stand out a little bit more I'm running out of time let's see what I could do uh, I'm gonna rename this to body and um, I'm gonna add fur on top of the body almost forgot so uh, I think I'm gonna change the color of the fur I'm gonna make it a little bit darker and since it's kind of red I'm gonna move it to where the blue purple a little bit so it doesn't stray far from the color. And, and purple and blue is basically the color of magical so uh, purple is magic so it's kind of makes sense that you know you use it on a 
imaginary creatures and that might be a bit too too blue too purple so I might desaturate it a little bit and make it a little more gray and I'm going to change all those uh, white part and bottom to make it kind of blue also and then in the mid section um, it's a bit ambiguous of what you could do there uh, so I'm just gonna put some uh, I could use orange yellow or almost orangey brown because the, your tattoo is have that color so I could use that color to make it a loincloth and that would fit if we use some of the color entirely then it would stand out a little too much so I have to use some color that are uh, that already exists in the the design so that it wouldn't stand out too much because it's already present um, now a little fur here just gonna add all the way there and then in the end I'm just gonna add a bit more lighting onto the horn since the horn doesn't have any directional lighting they just they just there with uh, uniform and it doesn't it has some form but it doesn't have like super contrast uh, lighting like I showed you in the beginning when I add the directional lighting it's give it a lot more contrast but um, you don't really need a directional lighting in character design you could um, it's kind of give it a stronger uh, lighting more, more contrast setting but sometimes it depends do you want contrast or would that help with your design or would that even make it more confusing so if it's present the problem then you might not want to add your directional lighting there um, but if it serves the purpose of making your design look better then by all means you can add a little bit of directional lighting to your design but if it doesn't serve the purpose then uh, you should kind of avoid it a little bit like as long as it look good it's fine you can use whatever you want and as long as it look good and readability is there you can use whatever lighting you want um, as well as the modeler can tell what is there so a little bit of loincloth and some light and shadow for the folding all right and I could probably add some more design here but I'm going to try to keep it within the 30 minutes time frame uh, maximum 45 but I think it's uh, well looks good enough for now and the more time I spend if I have more time to spend think about it it might get worse or better <laughs> depends um, usually it get better let's say 90% of the time but chances are I could screw it up also I try to give it a more contrast on the loincloth but that doesn't work out so um, just gonna erase all that and just use two values instead. so now I'm adding a new layer on top of this creature here and I'm just gonna use gray and on this part I'm just gonna draw that orangey figure like um, on the different setting if you want if you want to have a bigger stomach then you could show a bigger back so you can put him on a different pose so this is what I'm trying to say really quick right and lower the head and then you can have a big stomach and shorter pecs as well as you make the um, his back more visible and you can present more fur you can make the head even lower like right now I'm just doing a, a really quick gesture drawing of, of what you could put him in and then you can have him like doing a knuckle walking or something like that right so that would be another way and then you put the legs in the behind like back push the leg a little bit backward there so that would be another way to <clears throat> giving it a, a very good setting for this creature all right so now i'm going to add some more lighting I'm using overlay wait i'm just going to add the before that i'm just going to add some um, spike or some kind of hard surface stuff on <laughs> On the shoulder 
some sort of like you know uh, skin rough patch on that come and protruding the fur the longer I pin the longer I no longer able to speak um, don't know what I'm talking about all right well now we have a little bit of that then let's see here I'm just gonna add well let's try some uh, more contrast here I'm just gonna add uh, I'm just gonna use overlay as some lighting on top of the horn so I'm just gonna make selection on the horn and I'm just gonna use almost white what am I doing here okay go up pick the background color move it to about 88 or 90 like fairly almost white and add the direction of lighting from the top so there so now you can have a bit more contrast and if you do this you're gonna have to do it over all over the, the part of the body that's facing up right it's gonna be on, on top part of the head also because now I'm giving it uh, the light that kind of shining to the top from the top of the head and then in the end I'm just so there just and then I'm just gonna add it onto the skull and like I said it could be a bit dangerous because then you're gonna have to um, add more contrast onto the overall body because you can't just put it on the head but it's it looked fairly good on the head for now but when you try to apply it for the on the rest of the body it might backfire so I'm just gonna add just slightly on the back and on the shoulder and it should like create cast shadow from uh, from the horn right so it should like if the light comes to the top it will cast a shadow uh, onto the body so anyways so now I tone that uh, cast or directional lighting down a little bit and it looked fairly okay and now I'm just gonna add some lighting on to the body part alright guys well um, thank you for watching and uh, thank you for submitting in the work for the paid over and if you are a my patron on patreon then you can post on the community page and submit your work and if I see something new usually I haven't seen any posts in a while so um, this is one of the pain over video that I didn't want if you guys post your stuff you patreon if you're interested in getting feedback then uh, just post your work on to the patreon community um, section they have like the you know section you can post and um, if you are interested in taking a mentorship class it's gonna be eight week long courses uh, I don't have group class at the moment because I'm too I'm still trying to figure out the timeline but I'm still doing one-on-one -on -one, which uh, you could do that go to the artclass.com and you will see the link to the either eight weeks or five weeks I would recommend it eight weeks if you want uh, uh, a more like it's you're gonna get better with like way more but if you you know the five weeks usually like the, my pre former student came back and they want more courses but most people take eight courses anyway guys and I'm pretty sure I can help you become a better painter all right guys I'll see you on the live stream on Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and if not I will keep uploading some useful video and some of them may be a uh, fast speed uh, demo or something like that but you get more video on Patreon have a great weekend guys bye bye